<laughs> Not. <laughs> okay. Cool. Um, first and foremost, I'd like to thank you guys for coming today. Hopefully, we'll um, have some more people trickle in as we get started. But um, so, first of all, just to give you a little blurb about mentoring at Purdue, um, you have a little handout there. It's two sided. It gives you a little bit um, of our history and talks about some of our goals and objectives. But primarily. Uh, the goal of mentoring at Purdue is to enhance the mentoring relationships between faculty and women and underrepresented students um, within the College of Agriculture um, within, and within other uh, colleges at Purdue University. And so um, we do this by holding uh, monthly seminars and workshops. Um, we have our um, annual invited lecture series. Um, this is our third annual invited lecture series. And so this year, um, we're super excited to welcome Dr. Jennifer R. Cohen. Um, Dr. Cohen is a graduate of Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine. Uh, she is a molecular biologist. Um, but in her, um, during her academic tenure, as some of you may know, we find little pet projects and niches sometimes that start small and then end up being really, really big. And so uh, one of her claims to fame that we'll call it um, is establishing and creating community for uh, women and underrepresented students in the biomedical sciences. And so um, Dr. Estes has been, uh, he's, he's known Dr. Cohen for a couple of years and um, has talked about her energy and her success and being able to create those communities of, of support and success at Johns Hopkins. And so we thought what better way um, to share that information and to invite her here to talk with us. So um, I'd like to welcome Dr. Cohen and uh, you guys give a round of applause. So I'm thinking we should have changed the name of the presentation to Free Pizza. <laughs> we probably could have filled the room a little bit more, right? But um, thank you very much for coming. Thank you, Brittany and Dr. Esters, for the opportunity to come and talk about my background and my experiences with building highly effective professional relationships and mentoring relationships. And more importantly, we're going to give a chance to talk about what happens when the relationships are not productive and, and use the knowledge that's in the room to start to brainstorm and strategize on how we can avoid, recognize and avoid these, what I like to call pseudo-mentors or anti-mentors. Right, so I'm going to give you the take home up front uh, for two reasons. One, I just think it's like an off topic, <laughs> you know what I was trying to say. Um, and so here are some of the tools uh, for building highly effective professional relationships. Focus on uh, reciprocity in your relationships. It's important that mentees or protégés understand that this is a mutual relationship um, and that you're going to gain and that your mentor or advisor is, is going to gain. And that's what makes it a very productive relationship. And you want to protect your, your communication by being very clear about your expectations and your progress. And the, this is a transient conversation, a fluid conversation where you can reevaluate what your expectations are as you progress. Um, another tool is to be a productive village member. You know, it takes a village to earn a PhD or to com complete a graduate program. And you have some responsibilities, not just for your own education, um, but also for helping other people. So creating a board of directors of mentors is, will be important. And what I mean by that is not putting the responsibility of, of your professional success or your academic success on one mentor. So having a diverse group of advisors is important. I call them board of directors, uh, and that, that was very helpful for me during graduate school. Um, and you want to develop a mentor philosophy and perhaps talk to your mentors about what their mentor philosophies are that could save you uh, some pain <laughs> in the future if you have a good understanding about the perspective on how they will help guide you and how much skin they'll put in the game, right? Uh, and then you want to recognize and respond to uh, unhealthy or toxic relationships. So we'll talk a little bit more about that. So um, as Brittany said, I am a molecular biologist by training. I have an atypical background, academic background, where I am from San Francisco and I started out at Community College, City College of San Francisco, and earned my AA and transferred to a historical black college, Howard University in Washington, D.C. And then I earned my PhD in biochemistry, cellular and molecular biology at Johns Hopkins, which is a research home institution. So coming as a second generation San Franciscan, a woman of color, with a high 
higher education degree, um, I've been very aware of diversity issues. Um, and a lot of times diversity, and well, it's important to consider mentorship in diversity and inclusion. It's going to be very important in workforce development. So my mission for today is really to empower you um, and to start a, a conversation about what the components are that go into highly effective mentoring relationships. My goals are to, to give you some tangible takeaways um, to really talk about some tools for responding, identifying uh, positive and negative situations. So I want to get a feel for who's in the room. If you can, um, by show of hands, show me who the students are. Okay, students, students, students. And are we senior students? Are we uh, second year and above? Okay. Okay. So PhD students. That helps with it. With context. So here's an outline. We're gonna work together uh, to define mentorship ourselves. You know, you guys are familiar with the math program. And if you're not, please get more familiar. Um, define mentorship for ourselves. We all have an idea about what it is. So let's talk a little bit about that, but not spend too much time on that. And really discuss some of the mutual benefits that a mentor and a mentee uh, can gain. Um, identify some of the components. I'm going to tell you five components, but by no means is this an exhaustive list, an exhaustive list um, for components that go into effective mentoring relationships. We can discuss strategies for identifying and responding to uh, ineffective relationships, and then talk about, quite openly about issues that you might have or some concerns. So I'm open for questions. Please feel free while I'm talking to interrupt. So, uh, Fun fact, I'm not sure if you realize this, but the concept was first uh, presented as the concept of mentoring through um, Homer's The Odyssey, where um, Ulysses' son is getting ready to go on his epic journey to fight in the Trojan Wars, and Ulysses entrusts his son with the older, wiser mentor. And so this idea of graduate school being a epic journey and you being warriors <laughs> <laughs> it's a theme. Think of yourself as a, as a warrior. But um, combine the epic journey with the um, advice and wisdom of someone, an advisor and a mentor, um, for your own your mutual success. Um, so here's the part where I'd like to hear your voice. I want to, um, let's see, will you please help, um, help scribe? <laughs> um, using one of the, the dry erasers. And, and markers, I just kind of want to get a feel for what you guys think a mentor is. Uh, if we can talk about one word or phrases, um, what is a mentor? Like not, not Webster's definition, based on your own experiences. Right? What is a mentor? A helper. What do you think, Jennifer? <laughs> I was just thinking cheerleader, like cheerleader. We had kind of just discussed before. <laughs> Are you ready, Shana? What do you think, Shana? Um, oh, <laughs> uh, definitely someone who is um, strategic in advising. So, uh, a strategic advisor. Coach. Coach. So, all good suggestions. Uh, all of these suggestions have to do with relationship, right? To, be, to help someone, you have to have a relationship with them, understand what their goals are, to be able to promote them, you know, to cheerlead, you have to have an intimate relationship. To encourage uh, and strategic advisor, I love that. Um, that's really what, in, a, in the gist of the definition, is true, but it really focuses on the relationships. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, so it's your responsibility to identify mentors who promote a mentee driven uh, progression. This is important because we run into trouble when we meet mentors who have a cookie cutter idea of how, what the process should look like, who are not taking into consideration your background, and whether it's a diversity status, racial and ethnic, cultural um, norms, uh, 
and your goals and how to reach those goals. So identifying someone who can provide intuitive feedback and not just um, allow you to make decisions without reflection is important. Um, someone who's going to help develop your capability. Right? These are all um, responsibilities that belong to the mentee. Okay? Because you are in control of your professional future. Um, and you want to pair off with somebody who's going to promote you within their own networks and will be able to amplify you. And who has, a, if possible, a successful track record with students. Sometimes that's not possible if you have a mentor who is junior faculty or someone who is new. So who is the rational student who doesn't work in that way because when you applied, they put you paired off. off. Great. Yeah, so. so we're going to talk about, thank you for, for saying that. Remind me your name? Cecilia. Thank you very much for, for that point. We're going to talk a little bit more about the responsibilities of creating your board of directors and so really collecting mentors. So in cases where you are assigned a partner, a mentor, and it's it is a lot of responsibility to put one person in charge of your future, right? Mm -hmm. So you'll have an opportunity to, to create the board of directors. Um, so mentors really serve to de demystify the hows and the whys. Right? How do I graduate? How do I pass this class? How did you pass this class? You know, and really helping you to understand how can you make yourself more marketable, marketable and demystify why especially when it comes for international students. Mm -hmm. Cultural changes, um, differences, can we, hmm, you can tell us your experience. Well, it happened to me that uh, if I say I know, here is, is something wrong. For example, when my advisor, for my master, I have an advisor the first semester and I switch the second, but the first time, I say, when he, she was saying something to me, I say, I know. And she thought it was arrogant. But the translation for me is like, I have that information. It's not that I know everything. So um, maybe, so it took me a month to realize that that was wrong to say, I know. And for me, that's, it's like, uh, uh, yes, I agree. It's like in the translation. So, but I discovered because of the face. Yes. I was going to ask you, how did you learn that that, that was a trigger? So and she got the body language. Like, yeah, mm -hmm. upset. Mm -hmm. Because she thought I was arrogant. Mm -hmm. Did she tell you that then? I mean, no. wasn't it on her no, no. responsibilities? No, no, she didn't. You had she, figured out. Yeah, she told me one day, oh, I know you know everything. So I didn't know that was Oh, wow. <laughs> so, yeah. so how did you navigate that situation now that it, there, it, there's some tension? Yeah, no, it was... Um, I decided to switch advisors so I didn't for the institution that Purdue asked for that. But it was a semester process. Um, and a lot of patience. Um, Thank you. But they helped me to transfer to another advisor too. Mm -hmm. It was something small, so it turned to a nicer question. Yes. Good. But see, case in point, how, you, depending on your background or your uh, what you consider normal or polite. Yeah. Um, but that was the only thing, the only challenge that you had. Um, so understanding culture. Um, your mentor can be a translator, you know, especially when it comes to if you're a foreign student, uh, translating social norms, translating, you know, how do we do things here? Why am I, why am I experiencing opposition? Um, and so we're going really quickly through these because I really want to get to the discussion about some challenges, right? We all know how things go when you work out well. It's not why you're here. I hope that you're here to talk about when they're not working out very well and how you can still gracefully um, manage a relationship and still help yourself. So there are many different types of relationships that you can have with your mentor. Um, and in the image in the corner, it shows that you can have peer mentoring, you can have virtual mentoring. These relationships can be formal, they can be informal, long-term, short-term. I still have what I call champions um, from undergraduate and from graduate school. These are people that I make a point to 
quarterly send emails to and just give them updates on what's happening. This is important because come time for letter of recommendation or transitions into different opportunities, they're aware of what you've been doing um, and they're engaged in your success. And so it makes it easier to be like, well, you know, I'm, I'm, do you know of any opportunities? Can you help me still? Continue to help me. Um, so with these different dynamic relationships, um, they can be set up in different ways. They can be um, arranged by an organization like the MAP program, or if you're working uh, in your career and you're put on a team, they can be um, you decide who's going to, who you're going to interact with. These are dynamic, and I encourage you to play around with these different types of relationships and see what works best for you. Okay, so it's important also to remember that when we're thinking about mentoring, that you're bringing something to the table. That you're not the. If you think about the image of um, the lowly student at the feet of the mentor, you know, bowed over and. And there's this wealth of knowledge and wisdom that's coming from high. That's not always the case. And I, as, especially as a student, I want you to be empowered to realize that you are providing a lot um, of benefit to your, your mentors. Some of them are listed here. Can you guys think of any other um, benefits that are not included to how your, your mentor is going to benefit from the relationship? I think in the future, mm -hmm. like a, a colleague relationship, like <coughs> to have research together, to do numbers together. Opportunities. So did everyone hear that? We're talking about the future collaboration. This is uh, a person who's already earmarking somebody and saying, you're going to be my colleague. You know, it's a transition from what could be a parent-child relationship into colleagues um, and, and promoting on. Thank you for that. Any other benefits that you can think of that are not included? And there are also benefits for the mentee, right? So you guys think about that. So um, you have an opportunity to have direct interface with a positive role model, right? um, a, a, a source of wisdom and guidance, uh, especially if you are in a new city or new state, uh, a new department, learning a new language. For me, it was science. Science was a new language. So having a mentor who can uh, help me with that transition is important. Um, somebody who's going to stretch you, challenge you, with the intent of, of coming from a nurturing perspective. Not to embarrass you, um, but to improve you, so that when you are a colleague, you know, that that relationship is, is strong. Any um, benefits that you, that you guys want to add to this list? Increase your confidence. Increase your confidence. Mm -hmm. That's a benefit. I think also that could uh, increase the confidence, especially for a junior mentor. Having a successful mentee mentor relationship early on in their career can boost their confidence as well. Okay. So, like I said in the beginning, here this is a, not an, exa an exhaustive list of components, but here are some of the ingredients for creating an effective mentoring relationship. We're going to unpack these um, in the next following slides, um, but they are preparation, so prepare yourself. What is it? Start to think about your values and what do you want out of this relationship. So if we're thinking about mentoring relationships as dynamic, and you might be thinking, well, I know this to be something short term. I'm just trying to uh, do an informational interview. I have no intention to work with this person. I just want to know something you know, goal specific. Have an understanding of that so that there, you can tailor your questions uh, to, to that person. You want to set your expectations. You know, um, are you looking for someone who is going to be available to you and meet often with you? Are you comfortable with uh, virtual mentorship? Think about your expectations on, on um, interaction, on, on communication, on, on full disclosure and what confidentiality. Um, you want to be able to find common ground uh, remember, this is a relationship, and as in all relationships, they work well when you have similarities and you have things that you can relate to each other with. Uh, you want to be open to exploring and reflecting. And these are important because this is where the stretching comes, the, the growth in your uh, development, but also reflecting on, is this relationship still working? Is it healthy? Is it 
working? Am I receiving what my expectations are? Is it time to reevaluate? Um, it's a good time to reflect. And this could be something uh, we'll talk a little bit more about when and, and how. I think there is that you're assuming that the two people, the advisor and the right. see want to have this. Oh, it's not that they don't want, they don't understand that it's needed. Okay. So, so for sense. example, um, I mean, I'm a, I can be a good uh, researcher and a good advisor, but I don't see that the other person needs this mentor. It's like maybe I'm good teaching the person how to do, mm -hmm. how skill to develop, mm -hmm. but I'm not very good in the other part. Maybe that person needs another person for that. I have heard that many times. So having co-advisors that are different expertise? You mm -hmm. know about the emotional part. Ah. They see a mentor like emotional, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. more like cognitive. Mm -hmm. Has anybody else experienced that? Um, I think, yeah, to speak to what you're saying, I think that I have, or we all have advisors, but we don't view them as mentors. Mm -hmm. So, because to be a mentor is to be invested in me as a total person, mm -hmm. as, you know, my success <coughs> versus an advisor is, okay, you have a community yes. coming up, yes. yeah, what is your report looking like, what is your poster looking like, what's going on with your data, so I think that when, especially, I feel like in your situation, you're coming in, you're, they throw that word mentor around with advisor, and you assume this is going to be my mentor, but this person is your advisor. So you're disappointed, right? So if right. you don't set up your expectations, then you're right. disappointed. I think also people throw around mentor, they mentor, coach, um, sponsor. These are they're also synonyms to but I also have heard from the faculty point of view that they don't know how to be a mentor. And I'll tell them tomorrow. They don't know. <laughs> 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 tomorrow. Uh, that's, that's to the faculty. And so. they feel uncomfortable because they think this is not my personality. Think about it. You're trained to be, a, from my background, you're trained to be a researcher. You have to go out of your way to develop those soft skills, right? To learn how to negotiate, to learn how to communicate, to learn how to write. These are things you have to go out of your way. So be sympathetic when you're thinking about people who may be well-intentioned advisors. Yes. You know, um, another reason why it's important to not put all your eggs in one basket. Okay? So it, it is a valuable interaction to have, to have an advisor, to have a coach, to have a cheerleader, all of these non-mentor, invested um, personal relationships. That's, that's, that's valuable. So thank you. Um, okay, so preparing ourselves. What do we need to do? Start to think about what your professional and your personal um, values are. What do you hope to gain out of this relationship? And be realistic. You know, and you can develop that through talking to other, to other students or other people who have interacted with this, this person. Um, what are your strengths? What are the, the attributes that you want to or need to learn? And just developing a list of objectives. You know, and I think that that really helps. And, and when we're talking about preparing yourself, when you're having these conversations with a mentor, you can share, it's, it's your right, right to share that, right? Here's what, I, here's what I know about myself. Here's what I would like to learn. Here are the skill sets that I've already mastered. Here are the skill sets that can you help me acquire. And uh, you want to be able to prepare questions that you want to ask. It just makes it easier to facilitate some of the conversations. Um, I like to ask what somebody's mentor philosophy is. And it's surprising, there are lots of people, advisors, um, faculty members who have never been asked that question or have never had time to think about that. And that speaks to, one, that you're serious about this relationship and that you're going to rely on this relationship. Um, and two, you can get a feel for it. Do I really want to choose this person to interact with? If they've never thought about how do you move junior person into a senior position, um, that's, that's important information for you to make a decision, right? So should we say what is your mentoring philosophy versus how do you advise your students? Another version could be what's your managerial style, mm -hmm. right? Um, that's, those are all important. I like, I like both of them. I like both of those questions as how do you advise your students. But I would ask the students if you have access to 
current or past students. You'll get more information um, from them because they've experienced it and they can tell you what to expect. Right? Um, and if you do that, a, a tip that would be useful is to have that conversation outside of the environment, away from the mentor, the office of the mentor, because people feel more comfortable speaking honestly over coffee or tea you know, in, in student union than they do saying something that might be a difficult conversation with some with, with the person, the subject. In the right. yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, give yourself a chance to get some honest, honesty. Um, you want to ask about the cultural cultural environment. So, uh, does this mentor expect you to be working on the weekends? Do, you know, do Will you be working together um, after hours? Will you do anything after hours? You know, you and fellow students, or however the, the situation is set up. Um, I think it's a good question to ask. So, what's helped you the most? So that they can start to think about um, effective mentoring relationships that they've experienced, and and even draw on those. Right. And with the setting of like expectations, you want to communicate your expectations early. Um, um, I want to know how often I can meet with you. How accessible? Do you prefer that I call you on the phone, that I text you, that I email you? Uh, if I have an emergency, can I call your home? Um, how often do you want to, do you want to meet? Um, and to have an understanding of your own learning styles and teaching styles uh, and see if it reflects well with theirs. Um, we want to discuss some of the limitations, maybe um, topics that are off, off um, out of bounds, uh, that you're not comfortable with discussing. Um, you want to gain their confidentiality and know that when you do self-disclose, that they will not tell your information to their colleagues, um, who will potentially be your colleagues. Um, and this is not a requirement, but it might be a good idea to write up a a simple agreement, you know. Hey, this, these are this is these are my expectations. I understand your expectations to be this, um, and we visited it as as they change. These expectations change. Um, finding common ground, essentially looking for ways to relate to each other. Tell me about your personal background. Tell me about your professional interests. You know, what do you do on the weekend? How can we relate to each other? This is a relationship, so you need to relate, right? Um, what appeals to mentoring? Why are you available to advise me? Why are you accepting this relationship? Really get a feel for um, if you're going to be a great, great match. You want to discuss previous mentoring relationships and how they were helpful. Both self-disclosing and also asking the potential mentor about their previous relationships. Um, and when it comes to building relationships and community, it, multiple interactions in, in various environments helps seal the deal. Uh, one of the uh, other components is exploring. You want to be able to consider uh, topic-specific meetings, perhaps giving a theme to each time you meet. Like if you have an uh, advisor, mentor who is very busy, um, giving an agenda or an outline to email ahead of time so they are up to speed on what it is that you're going to talk about, and you can, you know, really use your time. Um, you want to consider brainstorming on priorities. What was useful for, for me during graduate school is create, was creating um, a list of, this is what I think I want to do, here's how I'm going to finish graduate school, how do I prioritize all this, can I do this at all at one time, um, and getting some feedback on that, and then creating a, just a realistic timeline and posting it near somewhere you can see it. So um, the first week, I met with my graduate mentor. I told her I want to finish this degree in a year and a half. And of course, she laughed at me. <laughs> um, and I, how can I do it? You know, and this is an example of. I'm sure this wasn't her priority, her her favorite method of, of uh, mentoring, uh, but she accepted what I wanted and helped me to create a timeline. So if you want to graduate in a year and a half. In the spring, you have to accomplish these things. You know, by summer, these things need to be accomplished. And literally, I kept that piece of paper for me because I'm a environmental scientist um, near my bench. So where I was doing experiments, I could see my timeline and I could chart my progress. And as I accomplished goals, I was checking things off and you know 
that was important. So that might be something that could be helpful to you. And then reflect. So is this mentor mentoring relationship working? Um, define what's working for you. Um, take some time either after you meet, or it could be something that's more after a semester, uh, after a year, and share feedback, right? That's important. Um, tell, tell the mentor, thank you. Here are some highlights from just our relationship in this first year. You really helped me with, you know. Um, talk about what you've learned. This could be for yourself or in conversation. Um, and um, anything that you would do differently the next time. So, so we talked about some of the attributes for positive relationships. Now we're going to get into an anti-mentor or student mentor and how many people have experienced toxic or challenging relationships, mentor relationships, especially. Yes, my people. <laughs> so, so in the same way, um, I want to talk about what isn't a mentor. So what are the characteristics, red flags, that when we see them, we know that this person is, actually doesn't have my best interest in mind, may not promote me. What are characteristics of a student mentor? Somebody who's cleverly disguised as a mentor, a well-meaning, very busy professor, a distracted um, mentor who doesn't remember your project, and every time you meet, you have to do a commercial. Like, remember me? I'm the one who's studying, or my project is working on. You know, you're not making progress. What are some some of those characteristics? Maybe a few. Can you think of some more? Um, I was going to say an opportunist. <laughs> um, I've had people who were. I was paired with formal mentoring programs and. They did it so they could like put it on their CV or something. And then I really didn't expect a lot from the person, so it didn't hurt my feelings. But it would just make me cringe every time she would try to call herself my mentor for the others. Because I'd be like, but nah, you're not my mentor. <laughs> Actually, you're not. So don't say that. So it's good that you held it in a professional, you yeah. it in a professional way. But. Yeah, I kept it to myself. But I think she knows that I know that she's not. <laughs> <laughs> so an opportunistic yeah. person. Uh, a mentor would not let their mentee get involved in a political pawn situation. I've, I've seen where they get sucked into that and they're, they're used by the mentor with other people in the department or college. Mm -hmm. So I have a, a, an example. I completed a, a policy fellowship at the National Science Foundation. And so there was in DC, and I was in the office of the director working on broader participation of diversity issues. And I was developing relationships with multiple people in the office outside of my mentor, my pseudo mentor relationship. And was, it was suggested, like, you should really study this, you should focus on this, and then write a report, and then, and it was essentially something that that person wanted to do. So having somebody who can advise you about the culture, um, it's important to make up your own mind about people and their, their motives, but having a heads up can be valuable. So uh, it's the difference between stepping on toes, being blacklisted, right, or being shot up to straight to the top and, and actually ex being accelerated. You know, these things, they, they can work out both, both ways, so I can understand how dangerous that could be if you are used this sounds like kind of a Sunday school answer, but I think that that pride really ends up inhibiting some of his ability to be a mentor at a different university when I was doing my master's program. I was in the very first course in my field and came up with an idea that uh, a conference in my field thought was a good idea, but that my professor didn't like. Yeah. And, um, uh, he, this professor agreed to be my mentor, and I later found out it, essentially to stand in the way of my graduation. And I was new in my field, so I didn't know if I should trust what other people in my field were saying about this idea I was going to try to stake my career on, or if I should trust him. But um, 
he wouldn't back down, and so uh, ended up having to find a different advisor. And I, I think it's just because he didn't ever want to say, yeah, I was, I was wrong about this idea. It's, it's actually going to be that. Did that advisor end up following through with the idea? Uh, I I I found a different ah. advisor, yeah, which I which I didn't know that I was able to do mm -hmm. until another professor who really was a mentor, but outside my specialty said, "You need to fire your mentor." That <laughs> 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 was really scary as a master student. I had no idea. I, I, I had no. I couldn't see how big the problem was from the inside. I appreciate you sharing and being so transparent. Um, something that we don't talk about often is what the, the, the divorce of professional relationships, how do you gracefully got out? Um, I, as a fifth year grad student, experienced the same experience. Uh, yeah. So I was in the Department of Molecular Biology, had a strained relationship with my advisor, and I would stutter when we talked, I would sweat, um, it was toxic. And I, would, I went so far to avoid that relationship, I would switch my hours so that I would work all through the night, sleep during the day when people were in the lab, so that I would have that and only email her updates, right? So that can only last for so long, right? That's I'm, that's not good. I'm not in a good relationship with this woman, right? And it came to a head where, um, in, in fairness, if it can be fair, I, mean, I wasn't targeted at this precise. Um, she was very successful highly funded, she's a, a Howard Hughes funded researcher, um, openly gay, in a male dominant leadership role. And her experience has been tough it out, this is this is what's going to make you strong so that you can become successful with me. And that doesn't work for every student. Um, it doesn't work for every junior faculty member. And um, depending on how you react to uh, specific lines of questioning. It could be very intimidating where you no longer can literally answer what you can't focus on responding because you're worried, you're thinking about the way that the question was asked or does this person think I'm stupid? <laughs> you know, why is this person? All of the surrounding uh, components to a challenge. Um, so I understand what it means to, to be in that scary position where you're going to jump ship you know, have to be forced to acquire new relationships. And the, the important thing that I want for everyone else in the room to, to know is that we're still here. You know, this is it's a challenging experience, but it's not something that is a roadblock, right? And I think, would you agree with me that it makes us better mentors because we can understand? Yeah. yeah. You know, some of the challenges, and it's, you know, just be sympathetic and understand that, you know, we've reached our limits. And it turns out great, right? You choose that another mentor, new project, successful. I'm happy to hear that. Thanks. Yeah, that's great. So could, let's keep going. So pseudo mentor, opportunist. What about somebody who's got too much pride to, to help you? Um, forgets. <laughs> I said that part. Yeah. <laughs> um, any other ideas? Well, I don't know what I would call it. Mm -hmm. But so when I was a first year teacher, I had a mentor that. Um, she would come and observe me. She would give me all bad marks, and she would say, well, that's not how we used to do it, and that's not how it's supposed to be done. And I said, but look, can you look at my scores? Because my scores speak for themselves. They're better than the teacher who's been here for six years. Mm -hmm. But I'm not doing my job correctly. OK, whatever. But I couldn't. There was no way to get a new mentor. Mm -hmm. Then through all kinds of politics, I ended up leaving it. Okay. So, I mean, so how did, what was the solution to that? There wasn't much of a solution. Mm -hmm. um, I was at a very conservative school uh, with the good old boys, and things are supposed to be done a certain way. And I already didn't fit in anyway. So, I mean, I had the afro. <laughs> so I just, I didn't fit in. <laughs> I had to go. I guess the one that I have is kind of similar to Brittany, but different because they're not necessarily looking for an opportunity, but um, maybe they're in a position where they're called a mentor. Mm -hmm. 
but they're not really interested in being your mentor. They're not really interested. They're not invested or interested. Um, and so they're just, I guess, doing enough to do part of their job. Mm -hmm. Say they did it. Why I have these students. Basically. <laughs> so how do you protect yourself in this situation? When you, when you realize that, what do you do? Um, I do, like you said before, I have a board of directors. So I just find mentors in other departments or uh, other colleges and just kind of run my ideas by them too. So that's good. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> advisor, mentor, or boss, and we classify it all in the same way, and it feels like you're supposed to mentor and guide you, but at the same time, you basically act like a boss because they're like, I expect you here from 8 to 5, or even later in our yeah. day sometimes, you know, and you feel like you're coming to work every day, and you're trying to figure out, well, but you're still treating me as a student, but you expect me, like, to treat this as a real job, so, um, I know I'm struggling with that idea, but I feel like we shouldn't come at you as a boss. Right. I've even seen graduate students refer to, hey boss, mm -hmm. morning boss. Yeah. 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 So can we, can we yeah. collectively think of, so when, when you're in a situation where you don't clarify your expectations or have an understanding of your boss's expectations, mm -hmm. how do you address it? Retroactively, or while you're you're going through it, what you're in? Uh, I know that you're exactly. exactly. So you've had this relationship ongoing. It hasn't been working, but you make it, you're making it. Work. Yeah. It's uncomfortable, but you're making it work. So is it worth it? Do you think that it's worth it to even address it with your your advisor? You no. Like, nah. uh, mm -hmm. Is that just the culture of your lab? Or no, or? I think it's like our field. So that's why yeah. I realized like it's not really worth it to go and like fight mm -hmm. with one person. You have to like as a group or you know together say okay like this like this is what our grad students need like the PhD the future of PhDs in our field is changing so th these are the things that need to be revived as an institution you know because this is common through any exactly. lab I mean if you poll people you would gather <laughs> and basically you get the response like you could be in a worse place and you yeah. know that exactly. <laughs> you, you know <laughs> this great environment, which we do, I guess, in the scheme of things, like this is the state of it, but I think, you know, it's just a situation where it would have to change, like, on levels beyond, yeah. you know, your professor. So we're talking about cultural change. Yeah. And it's just like pushing an elephant up a hill. Yeah. Basically. <laughs> we're in lower states. <laughs> okay. um, so let's, maybe we can talk a little bit more about that and then maybe some ideas because this is a great opportunity. I tomorrow will have a chance to address faculty. So if I can bring your concerns and, and present it in a way that this is data, this is real responses um, from students, your students. But tomorrow you will have the faculty that see value, and see something right. that they can draw the relationship. But the people that you need to address is the other that are not happy. <laughs> <laughs> that is the truth. We are selecting for you. Um, because anybody who shows up to a mentoring uh, presentation yeah. cares about it or thinks that they are a mentor and wants to improve their mentoring styles, right? Um, but they are allies, right? They are influential. They have colleagues. So it all is not lost. When you um, empower somebody, just like the information, I expect the information that you're learning uh, that you're sharing. You know, I think that you don't know, lose that just because you're you know, faculty. Um, so I'm, I'm hopeful that that's one of the ways that we can reach people we should have been right? preaching to the choir, uh, so to say, but um, still very important. Uh, because if we can get mentors who care about mentoring and take mentoring seriously to improve, um, that can be influential for their colleagues right? and still benefit the students. Thank you very much. Okay, so.
That's great. Thank you for that. Um, so it's important that we talked about um, Shana and I have kind of and coming um, Luke, Luke have given our examples on how we have supplemented our relationships, right? And you can kind of hear. So if you hadn't had an experience doing that so far, how important it is and uh, how important it is for you to reach out of your comfort zone and talk to people who are in different departments. There's value in that. Be able to use outside mentors uh, to bounce ideas off of. Hey, I'm thinking about presenting this topic, or you know, what do you think? It's important for somebody who has no idea what you're talking about. You can give them a presentation that you're, gonna, that you're preparing. Does this make sense? Is this clear? You know, how can I improve this? You know, this is all kind of like a patchwork. But, you know, so if you're not going to be able to get everything you need from one person, which is unrealistic and not fair, right? um, spread it out. And it's to your benefit and the benefit of those people that you get to interact with, right? Um, you want to realize as soon as possible <laughs> um, when you're not being mentored. You know? So some of the characteristics that we just talked about, we're just you know, throwing out there. When you start to see that, now this doesn't mean that you, you meet somebody who is an opportunist uh, and they're automatically, you should run, run away from them. But not necessarily, you know, be cautious when you're um, adding things together. Um, because you don't want to miss out on a relationship where, yes, they're not good at this, but they're great at this. And when you're talking about your expectations uh, and prioritizing, you know, you can kind of get a feel for both. Can I, can I handle this? You're a fifth year grad student, right? Can I handle this? Can I do, do the pros outweigh the cons? <laughs> yeah. um, so, so that's important. Um, so it doesn't matter. The, your, you can think of your mentors as somebody who's arrived in there, right? So they're not as concerned about, oftentimes they're not as concerned about your professional success as you are, right? So you're responsible for what's on your resume and what's not on your resume. I would add to the list of um, the pseudo-mentoring or characteristics of uh, bad mentorship or ineffective mentorship. Uh, somebody who doesn't promote you or, or provide professional development. Have you been to a conference? Do, does your mentor uh, introduce you to people in the field if you're wanting to learn in the field? Um, so one of the positive examples of preparation and professional development that I received was when I would go to conferences, my academic, my mentor would give me a who's who. It was kind of like a, a police lineup, headshots of the people I need to meet at this conference. So I have a picture, I have their title, I have their, you know, what they study, a quick, you know, things there. So I can, if I see them in the buffet line, or if I see them in front of a poster, I, I know who that person is and I can start a conversation. So empowering, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so so um, coming from a, a relationship that, that I was in the lab for five years, never went to a conference, never, um, got grant training, grant writing training, um, to a year and a half relationship where in that time I went to several conferences and, and published, you know. So th it really is not about uh, your potential, it's about your environment. It's like a seed, you know, a seed falls on this desk. It's not that same capability to which you fall into soil, right? It's got everything it needs to grow into a tree and be strong and resilient. Um, so think of your mentor and that environment as just as, as important to your your growth. So back to the thought of you being accountable and being responsible. Um, if your, your mentor is not promoting you, introducing you to colleagues, um, giving you professional development and supportive of your extracurricular activities, this is an opportunity to have a, a challenging conversation. These, these are, I want to revisit our expectations. I want to revisit some of the things that we prioritize. Prior here are some ways that I'd like to achieve these, have these professional development experiences. Um, and I really need your support. You know, uh, as opposed to sneaking behind, you know, not being available in lab when, the, when your advisor is coming to look for you, um, being an unresponsive, you know, that's it's gonna add to your, your challenges. So, okay, so we talked a little bit about, about some of the characteristics. I'm adding some more, right? Just in case you think that this is a bit, right? Um, here's the warning signs. 
someone who's giving you minimal investment, right? Someone who uses toxic communication style, um, put down, humiliation. Um, someone who has a reputation for being a difficult personality. Uh, someone who has a weak track record in promoting students or graduating students. Um, there was a, a faculty member at Hopkins who, on average, the students took 10 years to graduate. 10 years um, from that lab when the program average was seven. So, you know, be aware. <laughs> you choose wisely. Um, don't think that you'll be different. You know, if the mentor has, a, has been around for, has been at an academic institution or environment uh, for years, and has students that are graduating within 10 years, maybe with no publications or limited professional development, uh, please don't assume that you'll be different. You know, okay? Save yourself. Um, somebody who solicits agreement or makes it really difficult for you to express your opinion um, is more um, forceful with choices, um, creates competition amongst your peers, so if you're on the same research project, if you are competing for first authorship of manuscripts, something to, to consider. Um, and undermining your efforts publicly or in private um, interactions makes you feel guilty if you want to do something outside of your, your discipline or consider a career that's outside of their niche. That can be a challenge. Um, okay, so. Especially with the faculty that has uh, tenure, they are not even at the highest level mm -hmm. because they cannot be changed. Okay. Right? Okay. <laughs> so, so when you're thinking about your your thesis committee or uh, your academic advisors, you want to have somebody who has at least the same clout included on your list, so that that person can advocate for you and provide pushback when you cannot. You don't want your fact, your mentor to be the highest ranked person in the room. You know, yes, for prestige, and you can say yes, I'm you know, a part of this lab. But when it comes to pushback, when it comes to challenging um, some of the ideas that your mentor has, it it is easier um, from a colleague of equal rank than from my mentee telling me I don't want to do this, as opposed to somebody who's a colleague saying, you know, that doesn't make sense. She doesn't have to do that. So let's bring that into some small, we'll, um, two groups, please, um, where we want to sh share some examples of strained mentoring relationships and how you've handled it. If it's difficult amongst the, let's see, we have natural. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you can't come up with some strain, maybe talk about some positives, uh, you know, examples. It seems like we have time. Mm -hmm. let's, do, let's do both. Let's do both. Um, so let's talk about, let's lead with, we've been talking about a lot of negativity. Let's lead with some positive examples. Let's, each of us talk about in our small groups, the four and five, um, some of the most positive relationships that you've had, how you handled it, what were the elements, um, and then we'll come back and we'll share with the groups that we've been getting on.
Synergy. Mike is
I mean, I can already tell. And I came out to you. So, I don't have a person to eat dogs. But she says that. Anyway, so recently I was talking to her. She makes me like, hoping to get my brush by the brush. It doesn't look like it's going to work out in the way I hoped. So my question was, is this article a dead end or can I, is there anything else that I can put? I said, I think you know, changing the reasons and setting up this other person. And she said, well, that term's actually getting it done with the editors. Although the title of the journal is this, do you want to be my mentor? <laughs> it's kind of weird. Yes, <laughs> yeah, it's kind of weird. Yeah, it's hard so, to make no, you don't. Know, it looks like it would be a good fit, but I know you know. I'm playing fun with the same people. I just want to try to get the title. So, how do you make relationships? So, that, all that, just that, that like, willingness to, to share. Practical. What? Yeah, <laughs> practical and like dirty laundry. Like, you're talking about stuff that somebody knew that they felt like they didn't need to know. Yeah. And then, do you discuss like your five components? Like saying, no, how frequently I have to be doing it. Yeah. 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 Oh, uh, we sponsored a, a mentoring workshop uh, that a guy named Bob Gray. Like and the 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 basically, he, he won the presidential award for mentoring. It's a long, it's a very long title. He was a professor at Stanford, he's a classical white professor. Single-handedly responsible for populating electrical engineering academics. So we did this academic his that student, who is now the associate dean of faculty, so something like that at UC San Diego, and her oh, graduate student just got a PhD, and an undergrad that he's with her to get this kind of generation of people. But the, 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 the takeaways from that is that like that uh, I mean, uh, the, the biggest thing is that he had a This guy, what set him apart was he was willing to do this, and you don't ask him directly, and you would think we'll just answer him in. Anybody who's not talking but actually what you can pick up and know that that's the kind of relationship that you have to pay a little bit less time. I definitely think that is a good thing. I think that's 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 a good thing. I think the biggest awards in the field is not a big organization. The last guy is other than the science Bob Gray. He even wrote a book other on than, um, the instrumentation. Robert Gray from Stanford. Kind of He's um, his professor of at Boston. Yeah, he has been there. He's easily You know that. He's the advisor for every We do people. That was the thing that his comments about his was he pointed to several different times in the forty year span he had pretty drastic changes in direction about what his specialty is. But I mean, you, I mean, in my opinion, like, I'm particularly interested in something completely different. I mean, even in the humanities, I think I'm at one way to work for the SBA. Professor, who in many respects was a good mentor, kind of give us this speech. Just because she has a language, you all have to decide. Well, <laughs> <laughs> what kind of thing is going to be? You have to be known for something. And you're going to 
soon we have to decide what that thing is. And I don't think that's true. Exactly. I mean, he was trying to help. But I, I think that that yeah, successfully was when I very successful or whatever she was. Um, idea. And I talked to her. Yeah, it's encouraging because, I mean, especially in the neighborhood, the idea is kind of popular and then they are all out of stock. So. <laughs> and like, um, another thing that you said about so like a lot of the stress was right. has um, right. um, right. choosing a mentor and right. how many she was talking about like um, the right. 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 and gender and gender um, and so she, um, she she was really interested yeah, in all the time. So I have to leave um, a and five, 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 five times with my kid to sell her award. So I'm not here like because like I'm so that her, like some of the words, like you know, like to be cool. Well, I went to her and that was actually not when I engaged her in what she knew. So like I asked her questions about her words and then I asked her so that was one way to identify a Yeah, but in the email, I was like, I'm really excited to meet you. Like, these are the reasons why I was excited. If you don't find them, then you I never have a big tag. And I don't know if it's <laughs> And she was yeah, like, I've been lost. She was like, oh yeah, that's fine. Like, it's a, it's you know, make sure you have a positive um, story. I feel like I'm going to be like, oh, okay. Is that all about the art? Is that all about the art? Yeah, of course. Cycle. Like, I know what that is. Um, it's like a building that no one ever sees. Okay. It's a big building. We keep it storage for it. It's a historical building. It's kind of small, but not that small. But no one knows about it. It's completely invisible. I think the computer science is the opposite of it. Yeah. I feel like she's okay. very special. Yeah, because even though um, she's nearing the end of the I know exactly her. Yeah. Probably like once she she's every she's semester. Like so she, she brings every time you communicate with no, her. You I can hear that there are great conversations that are going on. I just want to invite you to wrap things up in the interest of time. These are conversations that can continue. Oh, no, no, no. Continue, you know. So now that you guys have started to have these conversations and share your, your experiences, I hope that you use this as a launching pad for developing more community expanding your network. You can relate to people, hear their stories, learn how they have um, overcome solutions that they've used, maybe that were helpful to you, um, and continue the conversation amongst yourself. So um, just to wrap up, I want to thank you for participating and bringing your, your ideas, and ask that you help me to improve a presentation that's like this. So I have given you index cards. And before we leave, I, I just ask that you give some feedback on what was most useful, useful information during this presentation. That could uh, be uh, suggesting comments on how to improve it, um, something that you learned that you didn't know. Um, and also, what do you wish that the faculty realized? I really want to take advantage of meeting with the faculty tomorrow, if you can fit it on the index card. What can I take back to them? What do you realize, or you wish that they realized about mentorship? Please make sure that you sign in. Oh, we're supposed to write that on. Oh. <laughs> no, no, I mean, I was going to say what I was thinking, and then I was like, wait, I'm supposed to write it down. <laughs> My bad. <laughs>
So there's also an event evaluation form that's in front of you. Uh, if you're interested in learning more about events like this, um, I know in the spring, um, I mean, next month there'll be a cross-cultural, cross-gender mentoring um, program. You might want to check it out. Please uh, give your feedback for the Mentoring at Purdue program. At the end, I just want to say, um, again, here are some of the tools. This is just a recap. And thank you for coming to uh, this workshop and for your constructive feedback. I just want to say a few things before uh, you all get out of here. Uh, those of you who don't know, uh, my name is LeVon Esters. Uh, I'm an associate professor in the Department of Youth Development Ag Education and uh, director of the MAP program. And my co-director is uh, Dr. Neil Knobloch, uh, who's not here today, but he's on campus. And I just wanted to, you know, uh, say thank you for all of you who came out today to support uh, Dr. Cohen's visit. Um, as she mentioned, she'll be here tomorrow doing a talk, university-wide talk, uh, that's over in the faculty staff and students if you want to come out. Uh, but as I've always said, and Brittany opened up with these comments, is that the whole purpose of this program, that is the MAP program, is to enhance the many relationships of faculty, staff, and students on campus. And so uh, we try to do our part the best we can to help facilitate that. And so um, hopefully you can spread the word to your peers, to your colleagues, about some things we're doing. And also, a goal of mine is also to create a space for uh, females and underrepresented minorities, uh, and even majority populations. I mean, uh, I'm, this program is open to everyone across the university, not just within the college. And so. Um, my hope is that you found some value, some good in what we shared today. Um, you'll continue to see this tomorrow during Dr. Cohen's visit. And um, we have what, a workshop next month. It will be advertising soon. And April's the last one for the semester, right? Yeah, April's the last one for the semester. Um, but anytime you have ideas or suggestions on programming that you want us, that you like to see, let us know. I mean, all the program, a majority of the programs we have for fall and next spring were recommendations on yeah. evaluation. So we take your feedback seriously. So feel free to email us. You can go to our MAP website, and uh, you can uh, send us an email, and we'll get that feedback as well. So again, I appreciate you coming out today, and I just want to say thank you. Yes? I was talking with uh, some friends that are undergraduate, and they were not aware of this. The, you said program. undergraduates? Yes. OK. Well, we, have to, we have to address that then. So when you get a chance, at some point this week, maybe you share that with Brittany and we'll have a little we'll talk about how we can do that. Mm -hmm. yeah. So again, I just want to say thank you. I appreciate you all coming out. And so hopefully I'll see some of your faces tomorrow um, afternoon. So thank you.